Harold, I don't, uh, I don't know where you are now. I hope you're here with us tonight. But one thing I, I do know for sure, uh, I know what you're thinking at this moment. And no, they couldn't get a bigger name to present your award. <laughs> it's often said that you shouldn't never meet your idols. And, and having met a few of them over the years, I can say that's fairly sound advice. But then I met Harold Ramis. Everyone knows that Harold was wildly gifted, funny, clever, subversive. But he was also gentle, thoughtful, centered, and kind. More than anyone I've ever known, he had a hunger not just for food, though God knows he had that hunger. No, his real hunger was for learning, for understanding, for meaning, and for love, which was blindingly evident whenever he talked about his wife, Erica, and his children, Violet, Julian, and Daniel, which he did often. He was unquestionably spiritual, unabashedly brilliant, and undeniably lazy. Okay, that might be pushing it a little bit, but Harold and I did share a profound love of procrastination and at times flat out sloth. Uh, the first stage of the illness that took Harold's life rendered him unable to walk, and when I called to ask how his rehabilitation was going, I was told slowly because as much as Harold hated being in a wheelchair, the fact that other people did the pushing was incredibly attractive to him. Harold was the rudder for a whole new ship of film comedy, anarchic, silly, but always profound. His scripts were built on and around a big idea, even if most of the time people were laughing too hard to realize it. Animal House isn't about toga parties, food fights, and public drunkenness. It's about the individual versus society, or in this case, the fraternity versus society. Multiplicity is about identity and reinvention. So is Analyze This. Bedazzled was about spirituality and belief, and Harold's masterwork, Groundhog Day, was the Buddhist path to enlightenment made palatable to a mass audience thanks to Sonny and Cher, multiple suicide attempts, and Ned Ryerson. <laughs> Harold had many successes in his career, but I'm not sure he gave them much thought. His greater successes were as an inspiration to future generations of comic writers and filmmakers and as a husband, a father, and as a human being. At his funeral last year in Chicago, his daughter Violet said he was the campfire we all gathered around for light and warmth and knowledge. If your child can say something as lovely as that about you, then you know a success that few people will ever know. The Laurel Award for Screenwriting Achievement is given to that member of the Guild who has advanced the literature of the motion picture, and I can think of no one who deserves it more than my friend, my idol, my campfire, Harold Ramis. Uh, it is my uh, great honor to present this, uh, this award, the Laurel Award for Achievement, to uh, Erica Mann Ramis and her family in honor of my friend, Harold Ramis. Like Peter, I uh, I didn't make the deadline for the teleprompter, so uh, I got my phone here. Um, so in all seriousness, I couldn't be more honored to stand up here and accept this prestigious award on behalf of my father. I just want to say thank you to the Writers Guild for recognizing the amazing talent, humor, and intelligence that my father brought to all of his work, just about every other aspect of his life. We'd also like to thank Peter and Larry Kasdan for all of their support in this award. Um, I think we all know how much my dad will love to be here accepting this, and I think we can all agree that he would have said something uh, far more profound and long-lasting than any of us could up here. But um, 
I also know that he's somewhere in much more comfortable clothes than these. Probably a uh, Tommy Bahama Hawaiian, and maybe some sweatpants, feeling very proud, happy, and loved. So thank you all, and have a good night. Thank you.